Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rocio and this is Risa's Rizzles. And if it's your first time visiting me today, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave. All you have to do is click on that big bright red subscribe button. And then after clicking on the subscribe button, click on the bell. The bell is what's gonna turn on your notifications and then that way you'll never miss another one of my videos. So I'm in sunny San Antonio right now. This video was actually supposed to go up yesterday as in I was supposed to film this video this week. Um, but I've been running around and doing a lot of prep for this trip to San Antonio. So um, now that I'm here in the hotel and I don't really have anything to do for the next couple of hours I thought I'd go ahead and film and edit and upload this video so that y'all would have your video of the week your curly video of the week so today what we're gonna be talking about is how to maintain and retain moisture on hair that has been color treated so let's go ahead and get started excuse me but I have like little to no makeup on right now and you probably can't even see the color of my hair because I'm literally sitting right in front of the wind well like in front of the window but with the shades because it's just really bright in here so I don't even know if you can see the color of my hair but Excuse the bare face, I just got back from the airport. But one of the questions that y'all seem to ask a lot is how do you retain the moisture in your hair or how do you maintain healthy hair after you've color treated your curls? Now by no means am I a professional when it comes to hair color, but I am gonna be speaking on my own personal experience since I did get my hair colored for the very first time like ever professionally this past summer. And I've also gone through um, the not so exciting moments when it comes to having my hair colored on curly hair. So. Yeah. I'm not even sure if you can see the color in my hair right now. It's like barely, it's, uh, you can barely tell with this lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a photo that I actually took a couple of days ago so you can kind of see the color in my hair a little bit better. But that's basically the color that I have in my hair right now. I had virgin hair before getting my hair treated this past summer. And can I first, before even hopping into this, if you're interested in getting your hair color, the number one tip that I would love to give you is to go get it done by a professional, especially if you were going through your transition, especially if you've gone through the transition and you finally have 100% healthy hair, please go see a professional if you're interested in getting your hair colored because only then are you gonna be able to find out and learn about what the color is going to be doing to your hair from the moment you get your color put into your hair and then, you know, down the line in on the long run. I got my hair colored by Vita. Um, she is the colorist at the Diva Shine Salon in Soho, New York. And she, I believe the color that she gave me was honey or maybe it was caramel, but she did a high lift. And that video you can check out by clicking on this link up here or by clicking on the link down in the description box below. But I fell in love with the color. It was a great change um, for me. I think that maybe if she'd have gone a little bit lighter, I probably would have had a panic attack or a heart attack. Um, I'm being a little excited on that, but I just wasn't used to even that slightest bit of change when I saw my results. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. I was just surprised because it was, a different me it was like a new me maybe that's another tip that I have so if you're gonna be dyeing your hair or coloring your hair for the very first time and your hair is like going from super dark to like Charlie Baltimore red then I'd probably panic with you unless you're a hundred percent ready for that kind of change but if you're not and you're looking for something subtle then definitely like I said talk to your colorist talk to your hairstylist and see maybe what's the best option um, whether you go lighter or you go darker it's helpful if you have that line of communication with your stylist Vita completely understands Understood the panic attacks that I was getting when it came to me coloring my hair for the very first time So we did do a very subtle change. It was still noticeable, but it was very subtle I honestly think that the majority of this video is gonna be of me talking about Moisture and keeping your hair hydrated as moisturized as possible So the number one tip that I'm going to give you all is to deep condition deep condition way more often than you did before. So I'm gonna be talking obviously a lot about what I've been doing personally with my own hair, the do's and don'ts of what I did with my hair. So that way maybe you can learn if it's something that you're interested in doing for the very first time. What I used to do before having gotten my hair colored was deep condition once a week. That was the norm. Deep condition once a week, protein treatments once a month, and that's just the regimen that I knew my curls fell in love with. However, when I got my hair colored, I bumped it up to deep conditioning way more often than once a week. So this is kind of how I washed my hair. So I normally, let's say, start off with clarifying my hair using a shampoo, right? So I wash my hair and then usually I will use a conditioner. Um, so washing my hair with a shampoo, then going in with a conditioner. And then usually once a week, what I used to do was deep condition once a week. So it'd be shampoo, 
condition and then deep condition. But what I had been doing after um, I finally colored my hair was I would shampoo if the shampooing was necessary, otherwise I'd just co-wash, but shampoo. And then instead of going in with a conditioner, I'd go in straight with the deep conditioner. So I'd be washing my hair, whether it be, like I said, with a shampoo or with a co-wash, and then going in straight with a deep conditioner and leaving that in my hair for a good 30 to 45 minutes. And that was every single wash. And I would normally wash my hair maybe every three days, um, so let's say I wash my hair on a Monday, I would probably wash it again on a Wednesday or a Thursday using a deep condition. So I deep condition basically every, I guess I can say every three to four days. That way I was ensuring that my curls stayed moisturized. So before having ever colored my hair, normally I would want a deep condition to protect my ends and usually to keep my ends and the back of my hair um, hydrated as much as possible. So now that I had color on my hair, I wanted to amp up that moisture and keep them as healthy and as hydrated as possible. So of course, whenever I deep condition, I would always focus on the ends, which is obviously where the majority of my color was, and also in the very, very back of my head. The protein treatments, I also amped up. So instead of doing protein treatments once a month, I was actually doing it once every two to three weeks. So obviously when you're adding some kind of chemical to your hair, there's that chance of your cuticles being blown out, and there's that chance of loss of protein. So you wanna make sure that you replenish that protein, and I have a whole DIY protein treatment that's available by clicking here, once again, or by clicking in the link down in the description box below. So I was deep conditioning once every three to four days and then I was doing protein treatments once every two to three weeks. My hair was looking great for the most part and then the holidays rolled around. I actually picked up a seasonal job at a retail location and um, I had little to no time to do anything. Like I barely had time to film videos, I barely had time to edit or post blog posts or even post Instagram photos or do anything that I was doing before. So with this change in my schedule, I barely had time to deep condition, I barely had time to do protein treatments. So there was like a whole maybe two months where I didn't do a single protein treatment I think in those two months from like mid-november to New Year's really I maybe did like two to three deep conditioning treatments like that's nothing in those like two months where I was neglecting my hair I noticed my ends were drying up much faster than they ever had before. I noticed that my ends were splitting, that my hair was breaking off, my hair was just getting brittle, my hair was getting dry, like, I wanted to cry. I was so embarrassed because here I am, Reese's Rizzo's talking about healthy hair and how to maintain your curl strength and volume and shine and overall health. I think I said health already. And here I am walking around with like a bird's nest on my head. Because of the fact that I had little to no time to really do my hair, for the most part, I wore my hair in buns. So even then, having my hair pulled back tight with the lack of protein and the lack of moisture was really causing even more damage and even more breakage. So that's another tip that I have. If you're getting your hair colored for the first time, I would actually recommend maybe wearing your hair out as much as possible. And this is just me, once again, coming from somebody who isn't a master colorist or a master stylist or anything like that. It's just personal personal experience, but for me personally, one thing that I noticed is when my hair was at its weakest point over the holidays, I was putting my hair up in a bun to hide the mess that I had on my head. And then on top of that, I was adding more damage because the more I was pulling my hair back, the more it was breaking from the edges, the more it was breaking like right where I had my ponytail and it was just not fun. It wasn't cute. It wasn't pretty. So finally at the beginning of the year, like first week of January, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I need to make a change. I need to make a difference. I need to go back to my old regimen. And that's basically what I did. I went to go get a haircut by my friend Giselle, which by the way, if you're watching this, I'm going to go ahead and shout out a couple of stylists that I know are going to take care of you and your hair, especially when it comes to coloring your hair, especially when it comes to cutting your hair. Giselle out here in New Orleans, Maricela, my cousin Maricela in Baltimore, like she is a master colorist. She's a master stylist. So if you're in the Baltimore or surrounding areas, go check her out. I'll leave her info down in the description box below too. Obviously, Ona in Jersey. Um, I know a lot of people in New York actually go to Ona also. I'll leave her info down in the description box below. And Vita, Vita from Diva Curl. She's the one who did my hair, Vita and Mia. So I'll leave their info down in the description box below too. But basically what I was saying was I went to Giselle so that she could cut off the damaged pieces, cut off the split ends that I had, cut off those dry, not even a curl curl that I had that was just like 
stragglers. She gave me a good protein treatment, good deep conditioner, and I walked out of there feeling so much better. Like a weight was lifted off my shoulders, a weight was literally lifted off off of my hair. And since then, I've been doing everything possible to maintain my healthy curls. And that includes, once again, deep conditioning every single wash, and I went back to doing protein treatment. So um, she did my protein treatment, I, I wanna say like first week of January, and I just did another protein treatment January, I wanna say January 17th, 16th, 17th. So I'm due for another protein treatment in another week and a half. I know that too much protein can actually be a little bad for your hair, so as long as you have that balance, so because of the fact that I'm deep conditioning with every single wash, I think that there is that balance. But until I notice my hair is starting to change or maybe just like not having it anymore at that rate, then I'll probably go back to what I was doing before, which is a deep conditioner every week and then a protein treatment every month. I do wanna play with more color this year. I would like to go red, maybe not Charlie Baltimore red, but I would like to go red, um, maybe play with a little lighter tones my mom has my natural hair color and she went like completely blonde a couple of years ago and I think she's still playing around with the blonde because I know she looks absolutely beautiful with the blonde and I know a lot of people say I look like her um, then I'm confident that a blonde or going a little lighter would not be that bad on my hair um, but yeah that's basically it um, those are my main tips when it comes to getting your hair colored especially getting your hair colored for the very first time let me know in a comment below if you're interested in dyeing your hair or if you're interested in getting some kind of color putting your hair uh, let me know what color you're in you're trying to go with and if you have more tips or if you have like like expert tricks or I don't know whatever if if you're just like really experienced when it comes to coloring your hair then let us know in a comment below what you think what your tips are what your tricks are because it's all about learning from each other okay do that. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed already and I will see y'all in the next video. Un besito. Bye.